Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of Eve Echoes. Tonight on the show, we are going to take a look at the Amar ship tree. Uh, we've done this for the Galente Federation and the Kaldari state, and it's fitting to see what the Amar are capable of. So we're going to take a look at the ships themselves, the associated skills that they use for bonuses, uh, the roles that the ships fit in, and of course the preferred weaponry and tank. Um, before we get into our subject, please remember to like and subscribe if you like what we're doing here on the channel. And remember, if you wish to support this channel, uh, there's a membership here on YouTube. Uh, there's a link in the description and you can participate and keep, uh, help me keep this channel alive uh, with a small donation. Moving on with our Amar Empire ship tree review. Of course, the uh, preferred weaponry of the Amar are predominant, uh, I think, most likely lasers. Uh, they've got some drones here and there, but mostly lasers. You know, pew pew lasers. Preferred tank? Well, it's pretty standard. It's just like the Galente. They focus entirely on armor tanking, so don't get yourself fooled up. Don't fit shield tanking on Amar ships, unless you want to make some weird fits, uh, meme fits, so should I speak. Use armor tanking on them because they have the most bonuses and the most hit points stash inside the armor. Now for the skills, uh, they're pretty much in uh, fit in the same c uh, category as the old the other empires. Basically, on ship themselves, uh, the ship, the command uh, bonuses from the ships, and uh, as I mentioned, we've got the lasers, and there's plenty of skills to, to deposit in those lasers category. Well, moving on with our first ship, it's the Impair, it's the Rookie, the Noob ship. Uh, same bonuses as uh, its counterparts, 15% small layers of damage per frigate command bonus and 5% armor. Pretty standard, in my opinion. Executioner, the first frigate on the Tech 2. We've got 8% stasis web fire capacity need and 5% small laser damage per frigate command bonus uh, level and small laser capacitor need minus 10%. Uh, yeah, the Amar weapons use a lot of the capacitor, so it makes sense to have some bonuses uh, cut down that deficit because just a uh, running tank affects your capacitor. Having your guns uh, run down the capacitor battery, that's uh, it, it stacks up and you can find yourself <laughs> without capacitor, which is kind of bad. If you don't know what capacitor does, it's basically your ship battery. If it runs out, your modules uh, can no longer activate. So that means guns are off, tank is off, and whatever other modules like scram, web, newts, Whatever, you get the point. So the Executioner is um, a decent, uh, fast flying frigate and its role uh, later on in the deck tree will be seeing it evolves into the role of Scout Tackler Interceptor. Uh, moving on to the next frigate, it's the Tormentor. The Tormentor has 5% small laser damage and 10% uh, small laser capacitor need. What this means is basically the same as just the other frigate. Uh, reduced capacitor need for its weapons and some decent uh, damage uh, altogether. <laughs> it has no mid-slot. <laughs> it only has like two turret heart points and three low slots. Uh, not Definitely not the best ship for uh, a kiter or a uh, tackler nonetheless. Moving on with our tech tree ships, we've got the Punisher. The Punisher, 8% small um, laser damage per small laser operation level. And we've got, of course, the standard small laser capacity need minus 10%. 4% armor resistance. So this is your first brawling frigate. Uh, meaning, in later on in the tech tree, we will see this ship, uh, the advanced uh, versions of this ship being focused on assault ships and brawling, most likely just Going in, blazing guns and uh, smashing lasers in in uh, left to right. The magnate. Now this is uh, the same 
kind of ship that the uh, Galenta in Kaldari have with the Heron and with the Imicus. Uh, it has that decent amount of cargo hold capacity, uh, 1000 uh, me cubic meters, uh, meaning you can hold stuff early on, you can use it as a hauler and you can uh, make some of those delivery, the offline deliveries that generate you some offline cash. Uh, this ship later on it evolves into covert ops and, and scanning stuff down and that's pretty much it. Too bad, as I mentioned before, there's no scanners, there's no probe launcher, there's no descan in the game yet, so we'll probably see this soon. Uh, until then, this ship is basically useless to uh, use in the field, as in uh, search and destroy operations. It can be used though for shipping containers and for hauling stuff. The first destroyer, the Coercer. It's a tech level 3, 25% small laser optimal range, as a roll bonus 6% small laser damage per small laser operation, and of course the capacitor need for lasers. What I don't understand, well, you, we see uh, so far all the ships have the small laser capacitor need minus 10%, wouldn't it have been useful to have this as a roll bonus, or altogether have uh, the, uh, the laser weapons 10% capacitor need are reduced so they can be in line with all the other weapons and have this, um, I don't know, have this bonus replaced with something else because of all on the Galente and on the Kaldari. We've seen various like tracking speed, we've seen uh, in case of missiles, uh, missile velocity. It would have been nice to have. Um, some other bonus and have every laser weapon reduced as in capacitor need. I don't know, it's it's nonetheless, it doesn't feel right to have every ship with the same bonus. Of course, uh, different skills will affect that bonus because different ships require different skills, but you get the point. Moving on to Tech 4. The Tech 4 has the Executioner 2. We see a specialized uh, type of Executioner uh, ranking on in Tech 3. We've got 80% stasis where fire capacitor need and warp disruptor capacitor need. Excellent for tackling and intercepting uh, early on. And we've got afterbur Afterburner bonus per level plus 10% velocity bonus. It can go faster. We've got 12% small laser damage and again small laser capacitor need. Boo -hoo. <laughs> Moving on to the Crucifier. The Crucifier uh, is again a nice tackling ship. It's got weapon disrupt. Actually, no, wait, I'm talking silly here. This is uh, the first support frigate um, in the Amar Tech Tree. The support frigate, which focuses mostly on disrupting weapons. Weapon disruptor strength and weapon disruptor optimal range. Now, I know for certain that in EVE Online, weapon disruptions mean uh, uh, disrupting your tracking, disrupting your optimal range, pretty much fucking up your turrets. But I don't know what happens in case <laughs> uh, of missiles. What happens is if you use weapon disruption on uh, an enemy ship that uses missiles. Uh, will their flight velocity be lower? Will the, the, um, the flight time be poopier? Be, uh, will the explosion radius or explosion velocity be affected? Because that's basically the, the ammo being in space. Uh, the, the rockets being in space, you're targeting the ship. You can't uh, pretty much affect the outcome of the missile itself. I don't know. Uh, it's good to test. If you've encountered this or you've played with this um, before during the batteries or even uh, in the, after launch, please let me know if you know what weapon disruption has, what effects does it have on uh, missiles. Moving on to the Dragoon. The Dragoon is the, uh, the second destroyer of the Omar. If, uh, if you've got like 12.5% drone velocity, so this is uh, one of the drone boats that the Omar has at, the, at its disposal. We have uh, three uh, drone um, hardpoints with two high slots for turrets, uh, if you want to fit any, two med slots and three low slots. Basically like the Argos, pretty much just like the Argos. Um, 
Drone DPS plus 20%, the same bonus as in case of Argo, small drone operation per level, and drone velocity plus 5%. And as opposed to Argos, which has a warp disruption uh, bonuses, this one has 5% energy Nosferatu optimal range and 5% energy neutralizer optimal range. So again, they've mixed stuff up because the support and we'll see the bonuses on the Arbitrator. Um, basically, the uh, the Amar ships had an affinity for Nosferatu and energy neutralizers. And what they've done, I think, is they've mixed them up a bit. And we've got some ships with uh, these bonuses and the ones that actually counted, you know, like the Curse or the... Um, what's the other recon? Uh, uh, it, it escapes. Anyway. Those had immense bonuses on energy neutralizers and uh, and Nosferatu's. Uh, I, I, they removed that, and those now have weapon disruption. They behave like support uh, cruisers, which is I, I don't know why, because energy neutralizer is insane if you fit your ship correctly. <laughs> you can basically wipe the entire um, enemy ship's capacitor and just close down all the light bulbs <laughs> so yeah the dragoon is the first drone boat from the MR moving on we've got the coercer 2 which is a special specialized version of the coercer 25% small laser optimal range as roll bonus 2.5% laser damage small laser tracking speed Ooh, okay uh, and a different bonus, but again, small laser capacitor need minus 10% and 5% armor. As you can see, this is going into the brawling side a bit, uh, as it prefers uh, going in a bit more tankier than the uh, Coerza standard. And we've got the Dragoon Trainer, which is a dumbed down version of the Dragoon, 12.5% velocity. Uh, the only difference here. The only difference between this and the uh, standard Dragoon is the drone DPS, which is considerably lower, even though it has the same amount of drone hard points. Three, meaning you can uh, launch three drones into space, of course, if you have the necessary skills in drones to launch that many. <laughs> if your drones level, yeah, that's the name of the skills. Uh, if your drone level is just like two, uh, you, you cannot launch three drones into space. Be certain of that. Uh, energy Nosferatu in optimal range, energy neutralizer, and 5% small laser damage. So, again, mixed bonuses because it has poopier damage with drones. We can actually compensate and add some lasers in it. But it does not have the <laughs> laser <coughs> capacitor need reduction. Moving on to Tech 5. In Tech 5, we've got Magnate Covert Ops. This is the specialized version of the Magnate, which can fit Covert Ops cloaking devices, meaning it can warp cloaked. Uh, of course, when you jump or dock, you need to deactivate your cloak. Uh, it has bonuses on scan strength and scan resolution, so it's a ship intended for tracking down people using um, probes, but they're not in the game yet. So this ship right here is definitely um, can definitely play the role of the scout, uh, meaning warp cloaked, uh, observe the enemy movement and so on, but as into uh, scanning down people, uh -uh, not gonna happen, I don't know if anytime soon. Cargo hold capacity 5% bonus just like the other <coughs> covert ops uh, frigates uh, and this one has 1500 cubic meters, meaning you can haul even more crap. <laughs> Inquisitor. So this is the advanced version of the Tormentor in... I believe so. The Tormentor, Tormentor... Nope. I am mistaken. I am sorry. It looks a bit similar. But the Inquisitor is actually your first um, logistics frigate, or your first logistics ship in the Amar Tech Tree. The Inquisitor offers 40% remote armor repair optimal range, 200% remote optimal uh, armor repair accuracy fall off, meaning it can repair from a, a greater distance, 15% um, armor repair capacitor need, and 5% remote armor repair activation time, meaning 
it can uh, cycle faster and repair faster and it takes a lot less capacitor to uh, per cycle of uh, a remote repairing. Now you've got 5% scan resolution to target stuff more easily. Remember, logistics need to target the friendly ships that they want to heal if or to repair. If they don't manage to lock down the, um, the friendly ship in time, it'll probably get destroyed. So this bonus is understandable across all logistics ships. Moving on to the Corvus and Navy issue, four hard points in turrets uh, as opposed to three that the standard Corsa has. 25% uh, small laser optimal range as roll bonus, 5% small laser damage and tracking speed and the capacity needs same standard bonuses as the Corsa, the standard Corsa. 5% armor and scanner resolution and strength, meaning it can target stuff faster. Um, it, it's definitely good for insta-popping fleets, for alpha fleets uh, running uh, destroyers because until we get to the point of playing alpha fleet battleships <laughs> it's going to take uh, I think two months or three months until people actually start rolling in the battleships not everyone's gonna have them so coercers um, are excellent alpha uh, ships to fit uh, to fill an, an, an alpha uh, fleet Moving on to the uh, Coercer Guardian, so this is the first tank that you can uh, find in the MR tech tree. We've got 25% small optimal, razor, uh, optimal range for lasers uh, as roll bonus and max armor link modules, meaning it, it can fit uh, armor links. Uh, if you remember um, when we talked about the Galente, uh, the armor links is just like the shield field module uh, for the Kaldari tanks or the shield tanking ships the guardians the um, armor link basically uh, creates a field uh, surrounding the uh, nearby friendlies and which basically uh, shares damage uh, uh, the damage incoming to the friendlies 45 percent i believe is uh, taking to the tank the guardian that is nearby now the problem with this is that the Guardian, the tank, needs to have proper resistances, otherwise the uh, Link, or I think that the Link actually suffers from a deficit, if I, uh, I've read uh, some more stuff, if one of the guys has like zero resistances, then, uh, then the Guardian will just take full damage, I think, which is poop. This needs to be researched because, uh, um, in my opinion, armor tanking in fleets and, and uh, like, um, like Guardians uh, will definitely suffer so um, feel free to test this out when you have the occasion either with your gang uh, friends gang members or your big fleets if you're inside big corporations and alliances test these out and uh, please submit feedback because the devs are highly interested in this if something is unplayable they should be aware of so that's it for the tank uh, one thing that I keep mentioning across uh, tank ships uh, Guardian ships actually, I don't understand the purpose of having uh, damage bonuses because they should be primarily focusing on tanking and on, on take in tank taking incoming damage like a pro. Of course you can have like a weapon there just to shoot something and, and just appear on the kill mail, but tank should be number one priority. So maybe some more bonuses for tanking, as in being a guardian, not a DPS ship, would be nice. Moving on to the first cruiser in the Amartek tree, we've got the Omen. Uh, let's take a look at the dumbed down version, which is the Omen trainer first. 10% medium laser capacity need right off the bat, and 5% inertia modifier. There's no act actual bonuses on damage itself, so this might be the poopiest uh, trainer cruiser. Uh, we still have the Minmatar to review. If I remember correctly, even the Vexa had damage. The Vexa trainer had damage for drones. And the Caracol had damage bonus for for its missiles. Uh, and this one has absolutely no bonus damage. Does it mean that the lasers actually have the most damage output? I don't know. We'll have to compare it, but we'll definitely keep this for another episode because I'm. I'm very keen to observe 
the damage output for each faction uh, and in, in ships of similar class and size. So looking at the omen, the standard omen, we've got the 10% uh, medium laser capacitor need and the medium laser activation time. So this, the DPS here is a bit higher because the activation time re being reduced means you cycle through your weapons faster, meaning you deal damage faster, uh, which increases the DPS. It's not a uh, specific damage bonus like 30% bonus damage for lasers is just cycling faster through your weapons and firing multiple times than a normal uh, other turret like I don't know a railgun or a auto cannon whatever moving on to tier 6 we've got the inquisitor 2 which is the upgraded version the most the advanced version for the um, logistics frigate 40% armor repair optimal range and uh, accuracy fall off, 15% armor repair capacity need and 5% armor repair activation need, which it's pretty much the same bonuses I think. Even the scanner resolution, I think the, um, the upgrades are in the resistances and probably in the uh, armor capacity or in the capacitor itself. Capacitor 897 gigajoules and Let's see this one, it's got... Okay, so definitely an improvement on the capacitor, meaning it lasts longer and can up, um, can repair stuff uh, longer before it runs out of cap. The Purifier. The Purifier is the, um, the stealth bomber of the MR. Uh, has 90% medium torpedo power grid need, a roll bonus, and cloaking device reactivation delay. And of course, can fit cover tops and 100% cloaking device lock delay, meaning uh, once you decloak, you don't have that penalty of not being able to lock any target. You decloak, you lock your target, and you start launching torpedoes. Uh, there's no bomb launcher. Somebody asked about bomb launchers. We have no idea if bombs are going to be in the game, but <laughs> it's definitely, hopefully, will reach the game. Uh, because uh, bombs are awesome. <laughs> you just fire and warp away, otherwise you're dead. Um, and you just uh, look at your um, kill mails and, uh, and wait for kill mails to pop up. <laughs> I think that basically because everyone is flying frigates and destroyers and for a while now um, people will not be able to reach those higher classes like battlecruisers and battleships just having a a bomb launcher <laughs> just dropping a bomb or, or several purifiers not necessarily purifiers several stealth bombers dropping bombs on a fleet full of frigates and destroyers just imagine the chaos and mayhem everyone popping capsules popping wrecks pop i don't know if the wrecks were affected by the by the bombs but anyway <laughs> it destroys the entire battlefield kind of breaks the game a bit so it's justifiable that they're not in the game yet but they probably will be and they should be dragoon sniper this is the advanced version of the dragoon that focuses on sniping although i think it has no it does not it does not have the bonus for brawling like the armor um, i think it was something that we found in the caldari caldari tech, tech tree um, 12, uh, 12 or 5 percent drawn velocity uh, the, the dragoon sniper is yet another um, drone boat 30% drone DPS 5% drone velocity and uh, energy nosferatu optimal range and neutralize optimal range the, the the bonuses here are just a bit higher and the drone DPS instead of just 20% is 30% and uh, the drone velocity to, um, to to allow the dragon to snipe from I don't know do the sniper ships have uh, a special uh, like pack when you activate it and you enter sniper mode and you lose like mobility agility I don't think so I have no idea I have to test him but it's going to be a while until I reach any kind of sniper ship um, moving on from the um, tech 6 tech level 6 cruisers we've got the Mala trainer the Mala trainer has four percent armor resistance two percent laser damage and uh, ten percent medium laser capacity need pet cruiser command bonus and it has one drone and four turret hard points now it's definitely a tanky ship as you can see it has 
bonus for armor resistances. So this ship uh, up in tiers will probably behave like a Guardian. We'll definitely see a Guardian version of this one. Uh, we've got the standard Mauler, same bonuses. Uh, yeah, same bonuses. The only improvement I think is in the uh, HP and we've got four hard points, still four hard points. This one has five low slots, so an extra module for, for tanking or for whatever you feel necessary to fit on it. We've got the Omen Navy issue, which is uh, an excellent version of the standard Omen. It has uh, some bonuses in damage. We've got 10% medium laser capacity need and 2% laser activation time. No, it does not. 2% medium laser activation time just a second I'm trying to compare uh, wait a minute minus three percent so what the hell mate <laughs> so the standard omen has minus three percent medium laser activation time and the omen navy issue has minus two percent is this a bug <laughs> Or is this just, uh, it might be uh, a, a bit weird on the design. Some, I think someone messed up the numbers because the activation, if you want the, the, the DPS to increase, you want the activation time to be lower, meaning you should have a bigger number here, like minus 7% medium laser, or minus 5, but even minus 5% would have made its point. But minus 2, which means Cycle, uh, the, the, the weapon cycles slower than this standard omen. What? Okay, <laughs> this is definitely something that should be revised. I'll make sure I submit a feedback. It's nice doing ship, uh, ship tree reviews because you find these sorts of stuff. Should be there. <laughs> Moving on to tech 7, we've got the Punisher Assault. Punisher, um, as remembered, I mentioned it's going to take the role of the Assault Frigate, the Brawler. We've got damage control activation time, survivability, fitting damage controls on it. A warp drive signature radius penalty, meaning it can fit uh, effectively. Uh, micro warp drives increase speed by 500%, but it does has uh, does have some, uh, some penalties because uh, your signature radius increases and you become like a big giant target for missiles and for other stuff. So, this having a reduced penalty actually makes sense, because you want to be as close to the enemy as possible. You activate your Mark IV Drive, you get right in your enemy's face and you start blasting him. Uh, moving on to the Dragoon Assault, which is just like the Dragoon Sniper, has the same bonuses. The bonuses are identical, I think. No, the only uh, the only um, extra bonus is the damage control activation time, meaning you can fit uh, a damage control and benefit from it activating faster. Um, but it's not much of a difference. I mean, if you have the Dragoon, we've talked about the Argos and the... Uh, which one was it? Was it the Korax? Yeah. Or the Cobra. Regardless. If you have that version as a sniper, just having the five seconds damage control activation time as an incentive to just go in there, guns blazing, brawling close range, uh, does not cut it. People will prefer using a dragon assault, dragoon assault, uh, for kiting as well. <laughs> just like the sniper it has the exact same bonuses for crying out loud. Moving on to the cruisers on Tech 7, we've got the Augurot. And this is the first logistics cruisers that you're gonna see in India Martech tree. We've got 200% remote armor, armor repair optimal range, group armor repair effective range, and group capacity transmitter effective effectiveness. We've got 5% armor repair activation time cycle faster and um, remote armor repair capacity need. There's no bonus for uh, ja oh okay we've got capacity to transmit at optimal range and capacity transmission effect but we've got no bonus on the repair uh, efficiency meaning it, it, it does not do increased repairs there's no bonus for that the only bonus for repping is repping faster because you have the activation time minus five percent 
Arbitrator, Covert Ops. Yeah, so this is uh, the uh, upgraded version of the Arbitrator. I can't remember the name. Please leave a comment with the name in Eve Online. We've got the Curse and we've got the something else. Uh, it's the same ship class, the same ship, the Arbitrator hull, uh, but one is Force Recon, one is um, Combat Recon, whatever. They used to have... <coughs> They used to have um, energy neutralizer and energy Nosferatu bonuses. Uh, in this game, the Arbitrator and the Arbitrator Advanced uh, versions do not have that. As you can see, there's no bonuses for energy neutralizers or energy Nosferatus. It has only ability to fly cloaked. Uh, and warp cloak because of the covert ops cloaking devices. Weapon disruptor strength and warp drive signature radius penalty, uh, meaning you can fit micro warp drives on it. Weapon disruptor strength again the um, the E war modules that are not present in the game, just like the jamming modules and if I remember correctly, um, what was it that the Galente and how sensor dampers. Yeah, to basically reduce the sensor strength and reduce the targeting range, but in the Galente case it's going to be a problem because everyone can target up to 1000 kilometers. what the hell. Uh, so the weapon disruption, again, you won't be able to do squat with it, so you'll just be able to use this ship as a scout. That's pretty much it. So far, no purpose until the e -war modules come into the game. Now uh, we've got the Mola Go Guardian, as I mentioned. The Mola takes the role of tank, uh, and we've got 25% medium laser tracking speed. Again, with the tracking and the bonus for, for turrets, these this kind of sh uh, ships should be focused on tanking. We've got just 4% armor resistances, no armor bonuses, uh, as in armor HP bonuses, uh, or me. Yeah, again, bonuses for weapons, medium laser damage, and 10% medium laser capacity need. Again, Laser capacitor need, you can just give a, a, a bonus of minus 10% for all lasers being affected, but I don't know, maybe this makes sense, forcing people to um, to upgrade, the, uh, it's actually for the advanced cruiser command bonus. Okay, so it's not a trait for the weapon themselves, like you need to learn laser upgrades and you get that bonus per laser upgrade, no, you get for for advanced cruiser command, which is again weird. Uh, moving on to the battle cruisers, the Prophecy. The Prophecy, yeah, nice looking ship, looks like. Oh, by the way, did I, I forgot to mention, all the ships in the Amar Tech Tree are basically inspired from religious terminologies. We've got the Coercer, we've got the Tormentor. Prophecy, uh, we'll get the, the, the Abaddon, the Apocalypse, the Armageddon. It's those, those are biblical terms. Uh, we've talked about the Kaldari having uh, focused their names on, on mythical uh, birds and actual birds, flying creatures, uh, and the Galente are actually focusing their names on, uh, on mythical, or I think, um, yeah, mythical personalities. Or like Titans, legendary Titans, uh, the Erebus, which is the um, the name of the Galenta Titan, for example, uh, has roots in Greek mythology because it was the Titan of uh, Death, the bringer of Death, something like that. Okay, so Amarians do like to have gold, shiny, plated ships, just like the Romanian Orthodox Church having gold on <laughs> the roof of the churches and this is no offense to anyone but i find it very amusing just trying to show off the opulency i know you guys uh some of you may <laughs> like having gold like bling bling if you want the goldy shiny ships <laughs> mars definitely your thing Moving on to uh, what it can do. So we've got 15% drone control range. It's a drone boat. The Prophecy, uh, which was laser based in EVE Online, in EVE Echoes is actually a drone boat. 15 drone control range as roll bonus, command burst, burst modules, slots. Um, I think I talked already about command burst modules. They're 
command modules that once activated they give a bonus for a short amount of time to all the fleet members and so on. 30% drone DPS per advanced medium drone upgrade and 5% drone velocity and 4% armor resistance so it is tanky. Be aware of that. <laughs> Most of the battle cruisers are uh, can be used in fleets but some of them are actually and do actually make sense to have them as fleet boosters. And we've got the Harbinger. Harbinger prototype this time and we've got medium laser optimal range. Um, 25% 25% and 25% to medium laser accuracy fall off as rolls and one command bonus yep because it's a battle cruiser it's it can be used as a command field ship 8% medium laser, uh, laser damage and uh, minus 10% medium laser capacity need same bonus for capacity need we might as well just skip that one when we read the bonuses because it, it, it's there and we I don't know 5% <laughs> inertia modifier, so it kind of handles a bit better. But battle cruisers are bulky, uh, a, a, a bit less bulky than the actual battleships. But nonetheless, having a bonus for agility is a good trait. That's pretty much it with Tech 7. Going to Tech 8, we're gonna try to scroll down through these fast because. Uh, we don't want our videos to be like 45 minutes. You guys might fall asleep, which I don't really want. Executioner Interceptor, again, um, the advanced version of the Executioner, uh, focusing heavily on the Interceptors, and we've got the same bonus as the other Interceptors, Warp Disrupt Field Immunity Level, meaning it, it, it ignores the bubbles. It, it does not get dragged by them, does not get stopped, it can warp out of them, no problem. Um, so yeah. All interceptors are great in that area. 5% stasis web fire optimal range and 5% um, warp disruptor optimal range. 15% warp drive signature radius penalty. So it does not get a big signature. You still get it, but uh, minus 50%. 15%. Uh, and it helps. Uh, you will take some increased damage from missiles, but considering that you are flying really, really fast, it's the only way you should fly interceptors if they're sitting idly they're sitting ducks <laughs> one shot and boom you're dead so tackle 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 intercept small laser capacity need and small laser damage small laser damage because if you encounter other tacklers or other scepters you do want to uh, have a fight right <laughs> Moving on to the cruisers, we've got the Omen Sniper, which is an, uh, an advanced version of the Omen, focusing heavily on sniping. It should have some optimal ranges, but it does not. Just the minus 3% medium laser activation time. Again, the bonus is better than the uh, Navy issue. <laughs> uh, but it's an advanced anyway, anyway, but the standard Omen being better than the Kaldor uh, the sorry, Kaldor Navy. The Amar Navy version. That's uh, that's 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 bad. <laughs> it should be addressed and fixed. Inertia modifier, better agility, turns faster, warps faster. Mola Guardian, Mola Two Guardian, an advanced version of the Mola, focusing heavily on tank. So we've got some uh, some more bonuses uh, again with the tracking speed. Armor resistance is the same. Just the armor HP and resistances should be a bit different, and probably the capacitor as well. So that's pretty much it uh, with this. So I think some of the ships are never going to be played because they don't offer much, as in incentives to fly them. You you're better off flying something way a lot cheaper, like just a standard Mola Gordian or just a standard Mola. But actually, the, Mola, the standard Mola cannot use the uh, the the armor links. So yeah, okay, the Mala Guardian I do understand, but the Mala too. Some ships may never see the light of space. <laughs> yeah, you heard it from me. <clears throat> We've got the Oracle, which is the attack battle cruiser of the Amar. It can fit battleship-sized weapons. Ninety-five percent large laser power grenade, meaning you can fit battleship modules. Uh, battleship guns, that is, and uh, they fit. 
uh, minus 50 percent less larger laser capacitor need so it's an extra boost uh, just to prevent that capacitor from dying out large laser damage five percent there it is and we'll ignore the last one six turret heart points one drone probably to fend off the um the frigates or the scepters that are going to come after it remember having large guns doesn't mean necessarily you will win because small ships can just come close to you and orbit at such a short distance and at such a high speed that your tracking is basically useless and you cannot hit them so your only defense is probably that one single drone of course this is not a ship that should be flied solo you should have a fleet with multiple of these multiple attack battle cruisers and every one of them should have the drone and uh, everyone should use the drone imagine being a fleet of 25 of these things just 25 drones coming down raining fire on the poor interceptor moving onwards to the harbinger no sorry wrong one harbinger logistics wait that's not no yeah I was uh, I was mistaken I thought I clicked the Harbinger again so it was a Harbinger prototype the Harbinger um, standard version we've got 25% medium laser optimal range and uh, medium laser accuracy fall off of course can use the command burst modules and 5% medium laser damage and 10% medium laser capacitor need yeah I forgot I have to skip that it's getting on my nerves Minus 5% inertia modifier, same bonuses, almost the same bonuses. It has 7 weapon slots, as opposed to the prototype, which has just 6 weapon slots on the high. And that's pretty much it on Tech 7. We're gonna... Uh, tech, sorry, this was Tech 8. Uh, tech 8, yeah. Moving on to Tech 9. Tech 9, we've got the Purifier 2. The, the upgraded version of the Purifier has more damage. Um... Ah, oh, large torpedo flight velocity. So I think it fires um, a bit greater down the distance. Come on, where is it? There it is. The purifier has. Nope, it's the same thing. 90, 50. We've got 99. Okay, large. Oh, yeah, and I forgot. <laughs> So the standard purifier can fit medium, like cruiser-sized uh, torpedoes, uh, while the purifier 2 can fit battleship-sized torpedo. <laughs> yeah, that's a big, big, big hit on the damage that this baby can output. So that's the, the, the only visible and good perk. The ship has, of course, three high slots compared to just, okay, still three. I think it has one extra, yeah, one extra mid slot to help with sub weapons, whatever, uh, either E War or something else. Moving on to the Arbitrator 2 Covert Ops. This should be the CAS in all its shining glory, but it's not. It has no bonuses again on the neutralizers or the Nosferatos. So we've got just a cloaking device, a weapon disruptor, strength and warp drive signature radius penalty and we've got 25% drone DPS and drone control range. Again, a drone boat. But again, weapon disruption pretty much useless and I have no idea what it does on the missiles. Yeah. This ship might not be real, that, really that good at all. This is uh, another one of those quotations. <laughs> okay, moving on to the Oracle 2. Oracle 2 minus 95% large laser power grid need as compared to... Uh, it's the same bonus, damn it. 5% laser, large laser damage. And this one has the same. Why? Okay, I get it now. Nope, I do not get a scan resolution and inertia modifier. It's the same bonuses. Oh, I'm getting fooled. What am I doing? Oh, I forgot. Uh, just like the Talos. So the standard Oracle has just six guns, while the Oracle 2 has seven guns. It can fit seven large battleship-sized uh, laser turrets. 
Moving on to Harbinger Logistics, so this is the Battlecruiser Logistics ship in the Amar Tech Tree. Again, as I mentioned before, uh, cruisers, the Logistics Cruisers, don't have a Tech 2 variant, uh, or at least a good Tech 2 variant, like in the, in EVE Online, where you've got the Scythe for Minmatar, for example, and the Tech 2 version, which is the Scimitar, which is an excellent Logistics ship, if you ask me. Um, uh, repairs good, uh, has high mobilities, very hard to kill because it has great bonuses uh, on resistances. So yeah, they don't have those in the game here. So th the only option to to make big fleets have the decent logistic support is to have these, the battle cruiser sized logistics ships, which basically kill off the entire idea of having nimble fast ships with repairing cap uh, capabilities that can survive with good resistances um, and they can keep the fleet alive. No, you just have you have your bulky fleet and you just add some more bulky ships that are going to be primary. They're going to be sitting ducks. But let's just hope that the whole class having a lot of armor and a lot of resistances pertaining um, to that specific tank type might be of some use and uh, they'll probably be useful in their role. We've got the Prophecy Guardian, so this is the, uh, the tank version of the Prophecy, has uh, again a drone boat, uh, armor link and command boost modules, 4% uh, resistances, drone DPS and drone velocity and that's pretty much it. Uh, but at least you got six low slots for your tank. Uh, let's see, this one had just five. So it is a decent improvement. Has five standard and this one has four. So you've got less drones, which is okay because you should be focusing on tank. So yeah, that's pretty much it on Prophecy Guardian. I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. We've got the Armageddon, which is the first uh, battleship of the Omar Tech Tree. Armageddon has 10% energy news for optimal range again. They they spread, they've dualized uh, the E War, uh, and they've given certain ships the ability to use Nosferatu neutralizers optimally, but they've taken out uh, key components of support ships uh, that used these abilities. I don't know. So the Armageddon has um, Nosferatu optimal range and neutralize optimal range. Warp this weapon disruption strength. <laughs> so the two E War types have been combined into the Armageddon. We got weapon disruption, weapon disruption, and, and energy Nosferatu and energy neutralizer. 40 drone DPS, drone HP, and drone control range. Just four drone slots. Of course, you fit heavy drones because it's a battleship. But here I do not understand. So either go with all the way energy neutralizer and energy Nosferatu, or all the way with weapon disruption. But now we've see them combined. I don't know what to say. It, it can probably allow the, the player to just choose which kind of evil does he want to, uh, to to wield in the field. But it feels off. I mean, I don't know. We'll see in the future if uh, some of these ships do get some patches or some patchworks uh, to get them running and actually decide on what role exactly will they be playing. The Apocalypse, which is the powerhouse of the Amar fleet. Um, a battleship, large laser operation, uh, bonus per level, 7.5% late large laser optimal range and tracking speed, no damage bonus. We've got scan, scan resolution to target stuff faster. It has eight slots for weapons and two drone hardpoints to defend itself from tacklers and interceptors. Six low slots to tank or to add damage because it has no bonuses to damage effective damage so having a mix of tank and some damage mods uh, would be very nice 
Uh, moving on, and we've reached to the attack level 10. Finally, we've got the Executioner 2 Interceptor. Again, another ship that I have no idea what, why, it's look, uh, why it's sitting at the tier 10. Should be down below. Um, probably move the, uh, the Executioner Interceptor a bit lower on the same uh, level with the attack a 7 uh, with the Punisher Assault. And have this lowered by one level. Executioner 2 intercepted. The interceptor has no major difference than the actual executioner interceptor, the standard one. It has the same immunity, uh, it has stasis web for optimal range. Okay, so the optimal range for webs and disrupt is a bit increased by 2.5%, having a 7.5%. But again, the just these extra bonuses, small ones, do not justify this ship being a tech level 10. It's just my opinion, same thing goes for the Koa Sekovet Ops. It's, it has nothing to do with tech level 10. Uh, it, it just targets faster, tracks faster and has the same roll bonus as the other Coercers, which is 25% small laser optimal range. It's not justified to have it as Tech 10. And we've got three more ships to review. We've got a Prophecy 2 Guardian, which is a, an upgraded version of the Prophecy um, uh, Standard Guardian. Um, if I, I'm not going to compare them again because I'm going to be disappointed. 20% drone DPS, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I can tell you what is the difference? It's the one low slot. So having just one extra low slot is now called the Prophecy 2 Gun. I'm not trying to be harsh here. Oh, but I have nothing against uh, the design team that, that did this. But some of these need to be reworked. I mean, I'm, I'm pointing out problems and they should be addressed. Um, if you want, you can help me start submitting feedback and tickets and uh, uh, that sort of stuff. Because it would be nice to have good ships and uh, reliant, re reliable ships in the game that um, that specialize in some specific roles, and just having a slightly better version, one tech tree above. I don't know. Will you fly this? Yes or no? I await your answer in the comment section. Two more ships, which are the last battleships. We've got the Abaddon, which has eight high slots, which can, which means it can fit eight, eight large lasers. 7.5 large laser damage. Uh, finally, some bonuses. <laughs> and 5% large laser optimal range. And we've got armor resistances. So it's a good battleship. It can be used for armor fleets can be used for brawling because uh, it has some bonus, uh, bonuses in tanking and uh, survivability. So it's an excellent battleship uh, to play nonetheless. And the last one, we've got the Apocalypse Striker. We've, we've seen uh, the uh, Megatron Striker, we've seen the Raven Striker now, we're looking at the Apocalypse Striker. Again, are these supposed to be some kind of uh, marauders? Uh, there's no, uh, currently there's no bonuses like they can go into triage or something like that. They just have 10% laser damage, 10% laser damage. Okay, okay, okay. I can see it now. This one actually has damage. But why those other ships from the other uh, uh, ship trees did not have I think they didn't have, and the others had just seven turret hard points. This one has eight, and the standard version also has eight, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So, <laughs> because they all have eight, they, they, it had to to to, to get a, another bonus, and they added the large laser damage. So this one might actually be good, and might actually. Um, justify itself sitting here on as the last ship on the Amar tech tree. 
we managed to finish this. I don't know how much it took us. Uh, we're gonna see it in post-production. Thank you guys for watching. A very big shout out to my channel supporters. Um, next time we will be touching on the Minmatar tech tree and um, fly safe guys. See you guys next time. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs>